Good evening, Zanzi. It's a Monday, and we are back on your screens. And hope you had a lekker weekend. Welcome to Trending Ascent, right here on SAPC3. Did I say Trending Ascent? S A. S A. Trending Ascent. My name is Mapple, and next to me is the. Read it. <laughs> It's the Empress. I'm mm. reading this under duress. I came up with that word. <laughs> you, you better thank me for that. Oh, you? Yeah, I oh. came up with that word. Okay. And over there, I'll thank you later. Is the ever so lovely, the ever so effervescent, <laughs> Mr. Stay at Home himself. More flavor. That's right. I'm the cure we're all looking for. Are you holding it down for Alma? You know, mm -hmm. your tender is just not, is forever going. You know, these tenders must multiply. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to do. Multiply the can, tender. Before we do anything, can we just congratulate to Master Katie? We have to oh, yeah. Props for his EMA. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, well brilliant, brilliant win. Congratulations. And with that, it's time for Top Trends. Gather around, my faithful friends. <laughs> Over the weekend, the hashtag Jodie Turner-Smith popped up on my timeline after the talented actress of Queen and Slim fame, love that movie, was cast to play the Tudor-era Queen Anne Boleyn in the upcoming psychological period drama. It chronicles the Queen's final moments and her stormy marriage to King Henry VIII. As expected, Jodie's casting to play the role of the historically white figure was met with mixed reactions. Tweet uh, took to social media to vent their frustrations. Nora Hedenrich weighed in by saying this. Interesting how the best actor got the part is only a solid argument when it's a white actor, but all of a sudden, historical accuracy is the be-all, end-all when Jodie Tanner smith mm -hmm. is cast as Anne Boleyn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prisoner of Nationalist of Scotland had this to say. Said Jodie Turner Smith is horrendously miscast as historically the, uh, the character Anne Boleyn. Now, no way Boleyn was that hot. Okay. <laughs> I love that commentary. <laughs> Comments of all of that. Uh, well, speaking of the miscast and all, you know when you have the feeling, you, you're watching a movie, you're watching a TV series, and something is amiss about it. Something doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. Yes, the storyline is exquisite. It's well-written, brilliant direction, excellent cast. But somehow the combos are just not communicating. And very often, <laughs> it boils down to one thing, and one thing only. The actor is dead wrong for the role, right? Mm. Which leads me to my question today. I mean, let's be honest here. Uh -huh. Which actor or actress do you think was completely miscast for a role? A complete miscast on some, couldn't they have found someone better for that role? Mm -hmm. Huh? And you know, sometimes it's not necessarily someone better because of their skills, but someone better for that character. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak to all KB being cast for the Lebo Matosa Oh yeah, I series. saw, mm -hmm. I saw love that. Love her I talent, love her acting abilities. I just, I'm one of those that want you to look as close to the character as possible. Mm -hmm. There's just something, it just, it didn't speak for me. It but wasn't speak someone to else supposed well. to play that role before KB? That was the other issue, and they quickly had to switch it up and replace it. It was Kelly Kumalo. Oh, yeah. So there was that snafu right. as well. And sure. I think that, must have, that might have messed up their plans. But still. Two yeah. people mm. for me. Uh, the first two one, people, my yeah, two people. Don't the hold back. The first one, <laughs> it was when they changed the character of Hazel in Yizo Yizo, oh, and classic. they replaced her with Tembi Yeah. And it's not like Tembi Sieta wasn't brilliant, and it wasn't her fault. They just changed the character, and it developed. So for me, and we've been through so much yeah, with Hazel, right? Yeah, through all that trauma, and we just grown to love yeah. her. So yeah. I didn't get it. Uh -huh. The second one is whenever there's a movie done or a series done about Jesus Christ, they just. The, I don't know, I, I, I was in Sunday school, mm. I read that description, and um, it's not the one, man. It's not the one. <laughs> is, is the blonde hair, is the blonde eyes, the blonde they hair, the blue eyes are there for you? blonde skin, hair like wool, and we always see blonde, <laughs> blue eyes. I'm just saying. I mean, it's like just trying saying. to describe my Blair with blue eyes. It's just, just <laughs> not my Blair. <laughs> For me, it's got to be the Winnie Mandela film. Remember uh, the one with Terrence Howard ish. and Jennifer Hudson? Ish. Two Hollywood stars, mm. mega stars in the United States. But listen, I don't think Terrence Howard did a good job of playing Utah. I think it was, it was horrible. horrible. Uh -huh. And uh, not to mention Jennifer Hudson 
playing may Winnie Mandela. I mean, guys, there's only one Nelson Mandela that we know Morgan outside Freeman. of the man himself. It's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Come on. Morgan Freeman. Huh? And there you have it. We've reached a consensus. It's settled, guys. Um, so let us know who you think was horribly miscast and it just didn't work for you in a film that you hoped would, you know, work out better. Uh, let's check this out, though. Earlier on today, clashes. This is a heavy one. Erupted between parents of learners at Brackenfell High School and EFF supporters in Cape Town. Now, these clashes are happening for the second time because of a racism at the school. The EFF uh, was alleged, allegedly protesting what they say is racism um, uh, after a privately organized matric dance ball was attended by only white students and by two teachers from the school. Now the political uh, party is calling for those two teachers who are said to have attended the ball to be fired. Take a look at what erupted outside the school. Fandach. <laughs> Mm, so, mm -hmm. it is. so the SAPS was also there and they intervened yeah and um, everything was a mess so guys what do you what do you feel about this particular story I want to sit I want to sit it out I want to be a good person today what do you feel <laughs> I, I read in one of the articles about how the school is saying well this whole event was organized by the parents of those learners at Brackenfell mm. and therefore they have nothing to do with it mm. and it's not their fault that two of their staff members were invited to this all white affair. Nonsense. What, you know what that for me that like immediately my spidey senses say hang on what generally happens at that school if parents from there feel just very free to organize an exclusionary event yes the school didn't want to do anything because of COVID-19 nothing official but if the parents just don't mind doing something that excludes so many people and the fact that two teachers from that school also don't mind attending. It just makes me wonder what else happens on the premises of yeah. that school. You know, the one thing that sums up this whole thing for me was what Susan Buffo while tweeted, said that shocking scenes from Breckenfell High, every last one of those assailants must be brought to book. The brazen assault and intimidation of a peaceful, of peaceful protesters isn't a clash. It's a crime. And I just think we see so many of these videos out there where people think Guti in South Africa is now the UWC mm. or WWE where we can just brawl on the streets. I say no to lawlessness and we think we need to start arresting people. Yep. Okay. Well, on that highly contested and uh, fiery note, we're going for a quick break. You need to stick around though. We're talking hashtag US election results with US-based journal Tango Lomo. And did you see Agriti's picture in ICU? Picture with his own book. We'll get to all of that when we come back. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. Welcome back, you're still tuned in to Trending SA. And I've got to say, South Africa is a movie by Scope. Whatever Film. you want to call it. <laughs> Film. I mean, uh, we make Amakwinya next door. We eat curry in Saxon World. And now we are reading our own memoirs in ICU. Ah. I mean, why? Well, because we are a world-class bunch of actors. That's why. And um, <laughs> we have to look at this picture because, <laughs> I mean, this is, for me, what should have been the cover for Agriti's <laughs> memoir. Not what he has on his belly. Excuse the pun. Uh, right now. So just for context, obviously, um, uh, Melody, um, Melinda rather, Ferguson went to visit Agritzi in ICU. She took this picture by his bedside mm. and she wrote an article in Daily Maverick. I, for one, see PR, publicity all over this thing. But I'm just wondering what kind of a hospital is letting someone in to visit during COVID-19, a pandemic. She also alleges there are cops inside the room <laughs> guarding him and they alternate. What happened to COVID-19 hygiene protocol? I spent the entire time looking at this picture because I wanted to see which hospital mm -hmm. this is because this is one hospital I don't want to go Why? to. Why? Because I don't want to go to a hospital that switches off your machines when you're in ICU. <laughs> so, <laughs> the grant. Those machines are off. And they're off. And, and, and what, what, what would he be reading? I mean, he doesn't look like someone who can read anything. I mean, mm. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. But anyway, sure. stranger things have happened. All right. So maybe the machine is there for vibes. But seriously, so something I agree to see. Um, 
just yeah, take note of that. Anyway, the dramatic race to the White House concluded this past weekend with President-elect Joe Biden and running mate Kamala Harris securing the victory, uh, the, that victory. Uh, Harris makes history as the first woman to be elected as vice president. And the news of Biden-Harris's win was widely celebrated across the length and breadth of America, in fact, globally. Mm -hmm. So upon receiving the news, um, the outgoing, oh, what a nice thing to say, U.S. President Donald Trump, who is golfing his life away, took to social media as usual <laughs> in a series of fiery statements vowing to challenge the win with an unspecified legal action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to give us some insight into the Biden-Harris win and, of course, the general feeling in America as a South African-born multimedia journalist and producer, Tando Lomo. Hello, Tando. Is it good morning, good evening, good afternoon? Well, what is it? It's definitely good morning. I'm feeling it. It's super early. It's good morning for sure. <laughs> Tell us about the mood there on the back of the Biden-Harris win. Guys, let me tell you. Mm. The <laughs> deepest of exhales, okay? A relief <laughs> if you have ever seen one yourself, okay? Mm. It has been a great joy. I mean, in all seriousness, so much was at stake on this ballot. Mm. I, it, it was a very, very, very serious race because so many people's lives in all dimensions, in every dimension you can think of, whether it be your sexuality, whether you're an immigrant in this country, mm. whether you're a black person, this country, whether you're a woman in this country, you were going to be affected by this election, whether you like it or not. And as an immigrant myself, the deepest of exhales. And I think this was a remembering for the American people of what they had almost lost sight of. It signified that there mm. is still room for character in this country. There's still room for grace in this country. There's still room for truth. There's still room for empathy, for compassion. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in all seriousness, yeah. it, was, it was a deep exhale. Tando, um, I saw a few people that were going, why are you guys in South Africa so invested in this election? And I just want you to actually unpack that. Why should South Africans care about this win? Listen, for a lot of us, the reason I came to this country, number one, you have to consider people come to to america to fulfill a dream it's a mm. it's a place where where dreams come true it's a place where you can recognize and tap into your the highest mm. potential of, of self okay so people don't come here just for the sake of it you come here to work to create a better life for yourself for your family i left ukokwami at home you know to, to come and do this over here and so mm. for people who are immigrants south african citizens Trump was already undoing so many visas before mm. before uh, this election. Mm. In his final days, he was undoing visas for students, which is a visa that I came on came here on the F1 visa. Mm. He was undoing visas for for workers. So all of those things directly affect what you as an immigrant in this country can and cannot do mm. or whether you can even stay in this country or if you would have to to find an alternative yeah. and, and that's not even exploring um the international relations uh implications of that but let's talk about the fact that the black lives matter movement obviously flourished under donald mm. trump he made no uh, secret of how much he detests immigrants as you said Tell us about the lived experience of black and brown people in the U.S. under the Trump regime and what you're hoping will get better going forward. The lived experience, the, the, the lived African-American experience is one that I have had to get cultured into mm. because as a black woman, you walk into a space nobody can see or tell at first glance that you're not of this country. And so directly firsthand, I've experienced what it is like to be a black woman in this country. And it is no easy feat. Mm. It is no easy feat to be a black woman in this country. And so to be a black woman in this country, especially under Trump, is more of the burden on your shoulders. You're walking around every day with just implicit biases wherever you go, wherever you go. And so you had movements uh, under Black Lives Matter, um, protests for people like George Floyd, mm. uh, people police brutality, police kneeling on the necks of black people. 
a time that was very, very traumatizing. And if you're an African-American, it is a re-traumatizing mm. over and over again each day that you have to experience videos circulating the internet or, or walking into a place simply without the knowing of mm. what is going to happen, who around me doesn't like who I am for the color of my skin. Sure. Mm. And so it just became scarier and scarier because the Trump administration bred ground for explicit hate, mm. hate where people could explicitly just say so and mm. show it, yeah. where <laughs> otherwise there would have been, you know, some kind of, if even if you felt that way, there was no room to show it. Under this administration, people were showing it left, right and center. Tando, thank you so much for sharing with us this evening. We hear the passion, we feel it, and we really appreciate you waking up early for us. <laughs> Good morning. Good night. Good morning. All right. <laughs> and then after the break, we bring you a My Life Story. We're joined by Mr. Ngobin, who claims him and his wife lost 132,000 in the hands of Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. You don't want to miss that. Stay tuned. We begin a conversation that has been bubbling in the news for a while now. In recent months, unconventional prophets, or prophet-led rather, churches have grabbed the headlines. And this follows a number of high-profile cases involving rape, unfortunately, money laundering and fraud. And this is all at the hands of self-proclaimed prophet Shepard Bushiri, as well as televangelist Timothy Omodoso. Right now, I mean, in 2017, Chili Londo and his wife Gladys Ngubeni alleged that they invested 111 odd thousand into Bushiri's uh, famous enlightened Christian uh, gathering church and basically told community members in Deep Blue Soweto to do the same, to also invest. Now, I mean, this brings the total to about 131 odd thousand rand because apparently two other people each invested 10,000 rand each. They were promised to get their monies. To this moment, it has not happened. And uh, I want you to take a look at this video. What is your name, ma'am? Lady Singobe. What have you lost? 111,000, 120,000. I'm on everywhere. Every day, bank is calling me to pay their money. And even in the house, there's no food, nothing. And everything is stuck. Hmm. This is sad. People's livelihoods, people's money. All right, to unpack all of this and tell us a bit more is Mr. Chililondo, who is Gladys's husband. He joins us to tell their story. Uh, good evening, Sawana Baba. No, Spili Le Baba. I started from the beginning. Hmm. How did you start your relationship with this church? Sikalo, we are a person to an ECG, a pittory, 2014. Uh, 2017, uh, Mama Wati, Kuni Mali, Umele, I invest in Wellapek, a son twin. So, like Magubo, Mklambo, Kipe, 20,000. Mm. Um, after 15 days, you will get a uh, food. Mm. After 15 days, you're going to get 40,000 yeah. rand. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, Magubo, you get 40,000 rand in February. Gay again, forty thousand, which means more much, ne? You know, tell us we eight. Each and every month, the Amalia yeah. Tabul. Baba explain good to eat Tabulagan Jan. I could mean that was a way to buy by an investor, a Mali to buy because I understand. So, Mina Baba intent movie was a good tip. Lema Lena was a good Ube Nayo. Why is Langan Saranjan? So you sold your car yeah. to raise this money? Yeah. Yeah, I own my tender of security, so I have a total of my center. So I buy two of my money, I have my 10,000. I have a seven, I have a seven. So now I have a seven, I have a seven, I have a feeling out. Not as you join this, this is what's totally mad. So, I'm going to realize that actually, Natalie Malle, 
ngeke siphinde siyithole sibone na isayina na i-contract yeah sa isayin so mina kuqala kwami ingicale nge 15 i15 yabe yakuyi 30 ngakhipha i10000 kwasala 20 insendo le ya 20 ibuye i40 from lapho ngo July 2017 July or August namanje ne Simon namanje be Simon le mali ukuthi izobuya nenzalo into esifana le okay mm. now we have to talk about this article by Bessie Bonu ku Daily Sun mm -hmm. in but um you apologize to Ubushir mm -hmm. but uh, imali yakho ithole back yeah iqiniso vel imali esithole back le imali lebe esikhiphile so but imali ya le yo interest in in investment ya what you are not pushing my crew man who come from like you were selling guns. What you mean is a value, real life value, like corn. Okay. So is what my boy also keep aya ke mali le aso sniye za ya nogu manje ngoba ku ku manje ku sese gusi mo si bianet. Eh, also sniye za le o mali le we si kipi le ti na le ya mbi enzalo. So it all ama se ba se ba vle le mali za. All right. So it's been three years. Uh, yeah, that you guys have, have been four years, dealing, four years, four years. Yeah. dealing with this yeah. thing. What has it done to Umdini Waku, your family? Um, how has it impacted your family? I'm going to rent them to rent uh, the houses uh, in uh, the back rooms. Uh, yeah. So as to Lemali, I'm going to go to Mali and I'm going to go to Mali. Mm. I'm still mm. looking for the job. All right. Um, and if you have a solution if you right now? I mean, a solution if you have a at least it's totally Mali and Zalozi. You know, it's not good. 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 But the interest is not good. How do you want to go to the land? I want to go to the land. 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 So, I mean, I was in the postcards and not always being so in Sassina. And then, um, Guamanja, are you still a member of Lesond? Are you still a member of this church even after everything that happened? Yes, Leon Pendula was with Pendula woman. My Pendula Mago went to Zamzon Kazia Sanga. Oh, then decided to be a son to him or a year quit. Okay. Baba Sebo Ngutu Fige, Namtlan Zukul Manati. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and just to note that our producers have contacted Prophet Bushiri's lawyers for obviously giving them right to reply. Mm -hmm. As it stands, we haven't received an official statement on this matter. We will keep you updated. And of course, that is how we wrap up tonight's episode. Of Absolutely. SA. Yeah. Uh, very intriguing stuff. And tomorrow we're going to be taking a deeper look into two prominent cases of self-proclaimed prophets, Bushiri and televangelist Amudoso, with Christian journalist and founder of the movement against the abuse of churches, Solomon Izang Ashoms. It should be another very fascinating conversation. Mm, and absolutely. on Thursday, we have a, an exclusive tell-on with re re reformed Pastor Makado Ramabulan, who wrote a thought-provoking book detailing how he was part of an occult society and he's going to make us go through their rituals and how he traveled across the continent trying to gain powers for the success mm, of mm, his mm. ministry. You do not want to miss any of it. Good night, Mzans. Mm.